Hello, and welcome back to No Kidding News. You should know the drill by now. I'm Bruno, and I'm here to keep you informed, but also engaged. No kidding. By the way, thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed to No Kidding News YouTube channel. We recently launched. Last week, we started talking about social media, the benefits, downsides, and the ways software companies make us the product. This week, we're going to discuss one of the worst side effects on social media, fake news. Fake news means different things to different people. But today, we're defining it as news stories which are false. Either the story itself is made up, or it has no verifiable facts, sources, or quotes. It can take any form, from an article to a tweet. So, how do fake news stories get to people, and why do we believe them? Well, it all comes down to algorithms. Our first guest today has done some research for us. Welcome, Timo. What can you tell us about algorithms and how do they affect what we see on our social media accounts? An algorithm is a set of instructions designed to perform a specific task. An example that most of us has done is follow a recipe, a set of instructions when, which, when followed, will give you an answer. Social media companies use algorithms to sort posts so that the first thing users see are what they want to see in their newsfeed. This way, social media can manipulate public opinion. That seems pretty straightforward. In fact, it's probably really helpful. So what's the problem with these poor algorithms then? Well, the most important reason why algorithms are so controversial is because of their impact on reach. Fake news on Twitter, for example, travels about six times faster than real news, according to a study by MIT, since people have a more emotional response. We think we are too smart to be deceived by fake news, but that is not true. In fact, the more you believe in fake news, the easier and easier it will be for you to get fooled by it. Depending on your personality and what Google knows about you, it will bring up a different search result. It's like a few billion Truman shows. Each person has their own reality with their own facts. This causes polarization. For example, if someone believed that vaccines were unsafe, they would only receive stories that confirm their beliefs. Back to you in the studio, Bruno. Thanks for that, Timo. In other words, the effects of social media don't just stay on the internet. It also has increasingly affected the results of elections in the real world. People's understanding of political issues, willingness to have vaccines, and very sadly, some people have even died as a result of others' actions on social media. That's why, here at No Kidding News, we always fact-check and use multiple sources to confirm all the information we give you. In fact, here at No Kidding News, we've also been thinking what we can do to protect ourselves from fake news and other online dangers. We came up with a few solutions and I have a few easy changes you can make today to reduce the impact social media has on your day-to-day -day life. First, turn off your notifications or reduce the number you receive. You can do this by going into settings, then notification. Everything you don't want to be notified about, you can switch off with a simple swipe. Sadly, this does not apply to your school alarm. Ah, no kidding. Next. Try to keep your electronic devices out of the bedroom when you go to sleep. I have to say, I find this one difficult myself, but when enforced, I have noticed a significant difference the day after. But here is Nicholas to give us some more advanced tips. Hi, Bryn. I love hearing your podcast, and thank you for having me as a guest on your show. There are many tools that fight disinformation online. As you just mentioned, you can turn off notifications, but there are a few more steps I would like to point out. Be selective about which social media apps you use. People tend to share fake news on social media, repeating what they've heard, rather like repeating gossip. Use browser extensions to block recommendations. For example, the fake news extension will provide a small warning message located at the top of the page that will warn first-time clickers about what to expect before you open any suspicious websites. It's not always 100% accurate, but it's good to know more about where you're getting your information from. One is the main whitelist. 
a browser extension that blocks ads and allows users to identify sites to be whitelisted, prevent any requests to sites not included on that list. Avoid clickbait, which is basically a way of enticing social media users into clicking the links in order to earn income from advertisers. Use good search engines. Fake news thrives in platforms that use personal data to choose which news to show you or to hide from you, therefore manipulating the information that you receive based on which website you browse on. Quant is a good search engine made in Europe that protects your privacy and your digital footprint. Be critical about the information you have in front of you. Please check the following against your piece of news. Recent. Check if this, your story is out, is out of date. If it is not current, things might have changed over some time. Application. Check whether the given information relates to your search needs. Weight of your reporter. Check who the reporter is and does he have knowledge and experience on the subject. Hopefully the above will help your followers to avoid fake news. Nicholas, that's brilliant. Well, I hope you feel, you all feel much more informed about fake news and how to avoid it online. A big thank you to both our guests. Nicholas and Timor, for their great knowledge and tips. Hopefully, our listeners will be able to navigate social media more safely and protect themselves from online dangers. Don't forget to check out our website, nokiddingnews.com. You can also follow us on YouTube and major platforms. Remember, make sure that you can think carefully about what you're signing up for. No kidding. Join us next time when we'll be discussing about the environment and how our actions impact the world around us. Until then, take care and thank you for listening.